so I've already tried to film this video once but I just got so incredibly hot trying to film it also I've been having some health problems nothing serious but sitting down makes me feel like I'm gonna pass out so we're doing this one standing up and this is not your typical introduction video where I just show you guys the process of introducing my rats with some nice music overlaid over the top things did not go as planned and I feel like I need to talk you guys through it and talk you guys through what happened because at one point I did just stop filming. I was more prioritising making sure that they were okay rather than trying to get any footage of what was happening. So I do have the odd clip here and there which I will insert. But mostly it's just going to be me explaining what happened and what we're kind of going to do as the next step. So as you know if you've been watching this channel I got crumble neutered because he did have hormonal aggression. And I waited until about five and a half weeks. After that, just to make sure his hormones had died down before I tried to introduce him to my two new rats, Whisper and Twix. So I'm sure within each method of introducing rats, everyone probably has their own way of doing things still. For me, I do like to start them on a neutral territory. Some people will just skip this step and start them straight into the carrier. Personally, I don't really like doing it that way. I do like to do them in the neutral territory first. Mostly just so I can see the behaviours they're doing, intervene a lot quicker than having to open up a carrier. And I just like to see which rat is going to be probably the biggest issue before I put them into a carrier or a cage. So I did start them in the neutral territory which was the bathtub. Looking back I probably shouldn't have done this, I probably should have just put them straight into the carrier but I've always done it this way so that's the decision I made and I put them into the bathtub. So I think the issue with this is that Twix was terrified of Crumble and I don't blame him, they are very very different in size. Looking at them they look like two separate species and I would be terrified of Crumble too so Twix was very terrified as soon as I put Crumble in and that immediately caused issues. Also I did set Humbug aside just for a second just to not overwhelm them. Also I did want to see if Crumble's hormones had died down before I even tried to put all of them together so at this point Humbug wasn't even in the equation and wasn't even causing issues yet. So the issue with doing it this way is that Twix immediately started to run away from Crumble. He wanted to be the opposite end of the bathtub to him and I think this frustrated and angered Crumble and he started to get more and more worked up because Anytime he tried to go towards Twix, he was just legging it to the other end of the bathtub. So this made him very, very angry. This then made him try to fight him and attack him. And then Twix was obviously a lot more terrified after that. Also, another flaw with the bathtub as the neutral territory. I don't think I'll be using this in the future. I don't know, but I've never had rats that could physically launch themselves so far out of a bathtub just wanting to get out so quickly that became a bit of a fail because they just wouldn't physically stay in the tub with him they were jumping out so I did actually have to move them on to just putting them straight into the carrier. So at this point this is when it became so invaluable to me to have really good friends that were a lot more experienced with introductions than me. Obviously I'm experienced with rats, I've had rats for a while now but I've not had that many rats in the grand scheme of things. I've probably done about four or five introductions which isn't that many and they pretty much all went smoothly compared to this. This is the most explosive introductions I've ever had to do and I've never had one go this badly, this quick, so I was pretty inexperienced when it came to that and that's where it came in really handy to have two of my friends who have probably done, I don't know, like 20, 30 introductions by this point. So I reached out to them and they said just chuck them all into the carrier together and that's what I did. That is a bit of paper stuck to my foot. <laughs> okay, my camera died but I'm back. Wow, the sun is a lot right now. Um, where was I? So yeah, as soon as I put them in together, they pretty much started fighting immediately, which usually is a little bit of sniffing, kind of sidling up to each other, and then they start to fight. But as soon as I put them all together, all four of them were entangled in like a rat ball, screaming, rolling around, fighting, bouncing off the sides of the carriers. And it was just horrible to witness. I know a lot of people probably would wait it out and just let them carry on with it. I pretty much tried everything to distract them and get them to break up their fight. I was shaking the carrier a little bit, tapping on the carrier. I also turned on the vacuum cleaner just in an attempt to distract them long enough to separate them and stop the fight. But nothing was stopping them. Um, so I did make the decision to open up the carrier and stop it physically myself because... I personally just could not sit there and watch them do that. 
The weird thing was, obviously it was the older boys versus the younger boys that was to be expected because they're not familiar with each other, but I think Humbug just got so caught up in the moment and so angry and aggressive in the situation, he actually turned on Crumble um, and he grabbed him by like his stomach skin, luckily his skin's pretty flabby down there, but he grabbed him and the only way I can really describe it, he was bragging him like a dog would if it caught like a rabbit or something and just shaking him by like his stomach skin. So that was weird that he turned on Crumble and he also bit Whisper kind of on his stomach. So at that point I was like, I'm not carrying on with this. I separated them and put them back into their separate cages. So I gave everyone like a week to calm down, forget about the experience, possibly allow Crumble's hormones to settle a little bit more before I tried to introduce them a second time. This time around I had my friend Emma on FaceTime just in case anything unexpected happened. I also had a second mind to give tips and advice just in case I couldn't think what to do in the situation. But I don't know if it was her calming presence that the boys were on their best behaviour around her. The second time when I put them all into the carry again, obviously I was feeling a little bit nervous. Given what happened the first time, I was expecting it to be as explosive, if not a little bit less explosive. But they just didn't really seem to care. Obviously they were a little bit tense, but it was nowhere near as bad as the first time. And it actually went pretty well. So yeah, the second time around when I introduced them, I didn't really need to intervene. They stayed in the carry a little bit. They did have a couple of scuffles, nothing as serious as the first time. Obviously the babies are still very, very dramatic. Also, I know a lot of people get mad when I call them babies. Yes, I know they're not considered babies anymore, but to me, because they're the youngest rats I have, they're my babies. So the babies were very, very dramatic, screaming whenever the other rats came near them, but they weren't hurting them. They weren't even touching them most of the time and they did progress pretty quickly. Obviously I was taking things pretty slowly just because of what had happened previously, but things in the carrier went pretty well and we didn't have any serious fights. So then obviously I did move them on to the next step of the carrier method. Because they were behaving so well and they were getting along so well, I continued moving them up the steps. The next step was a small hamster cage. I use that term lightly because it's no way suitable for anything like a hamster, mice, it's far too small, but that is the next step in the carry methods, a smaller, slightly bigger than the carrier cage. And again, things were fine in that, they got along pretty well. The only time they really made any sort of noise was at 3am, they liked to wake me up, completely startle me in the middle of the night, which is fine, it's all part of the process, but I think that was mostly just Twix being dramatic and waking me up at the crack of dawn, which it's fine. So yeah, things were going pretty well. I didn't even really film anything much at that point because Nothing exciting was really happening, there was no fights, they were all just consistently sharing food, sleeping together, getting along pretty well. I wasn't seeing any adverse behaviours from Humbug, he seemed pretty calm and pretty chill with them, which was good. I was feeling pretty hopeful at this point, until we moved on to the next couple of steps. So the next step is like a bigger, I guess you could call it a rat cage. It's a pretty low, shallow cage, it doesn't allow them to climb too much, but it does give them a bit more floor space. And again, they did perfectly fine in this cage. They seemed to get all along really well. I was still taking things pretty slow at this point, but I did add in things like hammocks, foraging toys, things to keep them entertained because although the introduction process is important, I also didn't want them to get bored at any point, but this didn't really seem to affect their behavior and they would get along pretty well. Then after a while of being in that cage with no issues, came time to move them onto the big cage. I do have this split into two sections just to prevent them from having too much space. But something about this, I don't know what it was, giving that added bit of extra height, Humbug just had an issue with the babies going up and climbing up the bars. He was biting their feet, biting their backs, biting their tails, dragging them down off the bars, chasing them. So obviously if this happens and you see any adverse behaviours in the next step, you do have to move them back down a step. And I must have done this about three times with him showing these behaviours. So it just didn't matter what I tried to get them to move from this smaller blue cage into the next step of the slightly bigger cage. The size difference in the floor space is not that big, but he just became very, very aggressive when we moved to the next step. And obviously I can't keep them living in that small blue cage forever. I really wanted them to move on to the next steps, but he was just so aggressive and it was starting to get worse. So I just could not get them to live integrated together into the bigger cage. Nothing I tried was working and Humbug was just getting angrier and more aggressive. And this is something I have seen ever since I got crumble neutered. 
and I was starting to wonder if he was possibly hormonally aggressive as well. Ever since I got Chrome or neutered, he has started showing slight aggressive behaviours, even towards me, which is concerning. Whenever he's walking around in the room, if I go to pick him up to put him back into the cage, or if I'm just reaching out to touch him, he will start chattering his teeth, puffing up, which is not a good sign. So I was starting to become a bit concerned that he was also developing hormonal aggression, which I wish he'd show me those signs when I got crumble neutered two months ago, because I could have just got both of them done at the same time, and I could have been done with this by now, but it is what it is. So yeah, not only was he chasing Twix and Whisper in the half a cage, he was also becoming a bit more aggressive towards Crumble, which, fair enough, Crumble was antagonised him his entire life, but I noticed a couple of times Crumble would kind of, if he'd pinned Whisper in a corner or Twix in a corner, Crumble would come across the cage and kind of push himself in between Humbug and the babies, almost as if he was trying to protect them, which, I don't know his reasonings behind it, but he was kind of inserting himself into the situation and a couple of times Humbug did actually bite Crumble. He did bite him a little bit above his eye. He has also bit Whisper again on the side, so I do think at this point I'm just going to have to get him neutered. Again, I'm just frustrated that I didn't get it done two months ago when I did Crumble, but at that stage he wasn't really showing me any signs that he needed neutering. I don't know if it's just him late developing or if meeting the babies has kind of triggered that or if Crumble's hormones dying down has allowed him to become a bit more dominant. I'm not too sure, but he is quite aggressive at this point, even with Crumble, which is surprising because he doesn't really pose much of a risk to him anymore, but he is also attacking Crumble and making Crumble bleed. So we're gonna try to get him neutered. It's incredibly frustrating, but it's just one of the joys of owning male rats. We need to get it sorted. So at this point, I've pretty much tried everything I can to integrate him into the group. At this point, even because he's also attacking Crumble and making Crumble bleed, I do think I do have to get him neutered. I did call up the vets yesterday hoping they'd have an appointment next week or in the next two weeks, but they don't have any local appointments for like the next month to have him neutered with the vet that I trust, so that's a little bit disheartening. I'm a bit not too sure what to do with that. I'm going to keep bringing them up and possibly try to fit him in or I might have to travel a bit extra, like an hour or so, extra just to go to a different vets to have him neutered, but I'm just gonna try my best to get this sorted as quick as possible. I think a lot of my frustration at the moment is not only the fact that I really just wish he could have shown me this a couple of months ago so I could have got him done, they could have all been living together nicely and peacefully by this point, but also rats have very, very short lifespans, and I just don't want the majority of that to be spent unhappy, fighting, trying to put them together. I want them to have a nice, big, active cage and just spend time together. It makes everything a lot more difficult, so I just feel a little bit frustrated in that regards. Not towards them, just towards the situation that I just feel bad for them. I want them to all live together happily and I just want to get it sorted as soon as possible. One good thing that has come from this situation is that Crumble and Whisper seem to be really good friends. The problem when you only get two rats is they're kind of forced to be together. I don't think Crumble and Humbug were ever that good of friends. And it's really nice to see the bond that Crumble and Whisper are developing because Whisper is very playful, Crumble is very playful, and I did actually catch them playing together earlier, which was so cute. So yeah, that's where we're at. I'm absolutely sweating. I've shut the windows just to film this. I can't wait to open them up again because I'm really self-conscious that someone's going to walk past, hear me talking about rats arguing and be really confused, so I'm going to try to wrap this up as quickly as possible, but I just wanted to update you on where we're at and the situation and what we plan on doing, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. So sorry that this wasn't the introduction video you were all expecting, but this is the reality of owning rats and owning angry male rats. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we sort Humbug out soon, and possibly I will make another introduction video when they all go back together the second time, technically the third time, I guess. So yeah, thank you for watching. I'm going to go open up a window now. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.